Today, we celebrate the Feast of All Saints. Liturgically, this feast falls on November 1st, the day after All Hallows' Eve. But as this is a major feast in the life of the church, the rubrics or the instructions we find in the Book of Common Prayer allow us to shift it to the next available Sunday when it has not fallen on a Sunday already. It is a feast of prayer and thanksgiving. And unlike All Hallows' Eve, we don't pray for the safe journey of the souls who have gone before us. Instead, we offer prayers of thanksgiving for the joy and love we have known through those God placed in our lives to reveal and share his love for us. Dating back to at least the ninth century, this feast was not just a liturgical one, but a literal one as well. It was a time for the community to gather together and really celebrate. Not only the works and deeds of those the church declared as saints, those one commentator described as distinguished and self-offering, self-sacrificing devotion, but all those whose lives were lived as witnesses to the grace they knew. Those Luke and Paul describe as saints, as the faithful followers of Christ. The everyday person who struggles living in accordance with the teachings of Jesus and the apostles in a world that seeks to fulfill its own desires more often than it does that of God. People like you and me who wonder at times, is the frustration this effort creates even worth it? Our only solace, our, our hope, in the promises of God, such as the one we hear in today's Old Testament reading, that those who believe, those who trust in God, will understand truth and abide in his love with his grace and mercy upon us as God watches over us. It is a promise we hear in the psalm as well, when the psalmist writes that those who seek God with clean hands and a pure heart shall receive blessing upon blessing, trusting that salvation is theirs because God is God. And not just a God of Israel, but the God of all we hear it in the epistle too, as John describes the new world order, the new Jerusalem brought about through God's love for us. One in which the peace that we strive for will finally be known. And we hear it in the words of Jesus in today's gospel. As he turns to ask Martha, did I not tell you? That if you believed, if you had faith, trust in God, you would see God's glory. We heard the promise again, this time on national television for all to hear, when our presiding bishop used the opening words of our liturgy for the funeral service of Colin Powell. And again, here in our own community, when the bishop did the same for Hank Austin. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though they die. And everyone who has life and has committed themselves to me in faith shall not die forever. Notice, nowhere in this promise does it say we must live perfect lives. Just faithful ones. Doing our best with God's help as our baptismal vows remind us to live life bearing witness to the hope we know in Jesus. Hope that is rooted in the gospel that proclaims God's victory over death. Hope promising us that death is not the end 
Only a door we must pass through to know life eternal. Life where pain and sorrow are no more. Where the fullness of God's love for us is finally realized. And where our joy is made complete. It is in the midst of grief. We gather today to celebrate. Not only the love we shared with those who have gone before us. But that they now know what we long to. The joy and fullness of God's love. Because we have this hope, this assurance, death is not something for us to fear. Now, like most of you, while I'm not afraid of death, I'm not quite ready to embrace it. I feel there's more God is asking me to do and experience before I join those I remember and who remember me. In John's Gospel account, a reading that is often read at funerals reminds us that when we die, when we have lived the faithful lives or tried to do as best we could, we will go where Jesus already is. And that our Lord has prepared a place just for us. So that when our time comes, we have nothing to worry about, nothing to fear. And that we will be welcomed as one who has, is, and always will be loved by God. I'm sorry if today's message is a little dark, this talk of death. But I've learned in my own life, it is in the midst of darkness that our faith is strengthened. Thereby opening our eyes to see the light that truly surrounds us. Light that reveals the goodness of our Lord. Goodness that enables us to do our best to live lives as witnesses to the love we find in Jesus. And in those God has placed in our lives. Those who, like Jesus, live still loving us as we love them. So today, we celebrate this good news. Maybe not with an earthly feast, although we could next year if we wanted. High nights is always a good day. But with a heavenly one. As we gather here, around the great banquet table in our midst. Where through the body we are strengthened and the blood, our hands and our hearts are made clean. It is this feast that is a foretaste of the feast to come. And that we share it today, not only with those that we can see, but with all those who have gone before us and those who will come after us as well. As one commentator wrote, it is a feast that is grounded, anchored in the past work of God. Stabilizes in the present the love of God. And focuses on the future glory of God. It is a feast, as Luke describes, in which, like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, we meet Christ. Alive. And real. And as Paul elaborates, in which we meet all those who are in, alive in Christ as well. In a few moments, we are going to hear the names of some of those who have gone before us. Not to grieve their departure from this world, but to give thanks for the love we knew in and through them. They, like so many others, Join us as we come forward to share in a meal like no other. As we come forward today to receive communion, let each of us give thanks for those who are named and those unnamed, whose presence in our lives, be they in the past, the present, or the future, Help us to know and experience 
the love of God. Amen.